Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial and today we're going to play with fire. As you can tell by the hashtag in the top corner of the video, this tutorial is once again sponsored by Intel. Last month Intel launched a campaign to introduce their latest i7 Extreme Edition CPUs and the 750 series SSDs to filmmakers and visual effects artists and as part of this initiative they offered to send me a fully spec'd out PC to try and to keep and to talk a little bit about my experience with the computer as part of this tutorial. If you go over to their landing page at vfxcreator.intel.com you can find all of the details for their top of the line hardware as well as links to Intel partners that offer custom built digital content creation systems. And something I'm personally very excited about is that my face melt tutorial is featured right in the middle of all of the techy goodness. If you haven't seen it already and you haven't eaten yet, I highly recommend that you go and check it out and I am going to put a link to this landing page down in the description of the video. In this tutorial we are going to explore how to create cool looking fire within Houdini and composite it into a live action shot using Adobe After Effects. Now because my videos tend to be rather extensive and I know me talking so much doesn't really help the issue, in this video we are going to focus on the compositing part of the process. For one, I really wanted to find out how the Intel CPU and especially the 750 series SSDs would handle compositing visual effects in full 4K, but also I figured it might be much more fun for you guys to start out by compositing together the final effect and we can then go on and explore how to create your own custom file within Houdini in some later tutorials. And don't worry, I will provide you everything you need to follow along down in the description of the video. Now this is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are fairly comfortable using Adobe After Effects but now before I talk your face off let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects. I have a brand new project here and I already imported the four media files that we are going to use for this tutorial. Now for the purpose of giving you a real experience of how the Intel CPU and the SSD drives can deal with 4K visual effects, all of the clips I'm going to use for this tutorial are in full 4K so that's 3840 by 2160 resolution which is pretty massive. When you download these clips you will find that I've converted them all down to 1080p for you just so it's a bit easier to follow along and I don't have to upload massive files into the internet. Also, while I love drooling about technical specification, I'm much more of a practical let's just try it out and see how it goes sort of guy. So before we jump into the tutorial, I want to show you a few tests that I ran to compare my old SATA 3 SSD drives versus non-SSD drives versus the new 750 series from Intel. Let's first have a look at raw performance. For this test I took the entire project folder with the face melt effect from my last tutorial for Intel and copied it from one of the 400 GB Intel 750 series drives onto the other one. All up copying 62 GB of media and project files and renders took 1 minute and 24 seconds. Now for comparison I copied the same 62 GB project folder between my standard SATA 3 SSD drives and it took a whopping 5 minutes and 52 seconds. So in terms of raw throughput and just moving files around, a huge win for the Intel 750 drives. I've never used NVMe technology before but so far I'm pretty impressed. But ok, most of the time when you're copying large amounts of files around it's usually for backup and you may not mind waiting a little bit. So I wanted to know how well do the drives perform for something like opening a very complex After Effects project. Opening my face melt After Effects project on the Intel 750 series SSD drives took 4 seconds. Opening the same project on the same computer but from a non-SSD standard drive took 19 seconds. 
So again, no real competition there. But finally, I also checked how long it would take to open that project on my standard SATA 3 SSD drives and that took also 4 seconds. Now, in terms of performance, there's absolutely no competition. NVMe massively outbeats anything you can do with SATA 3. However, when you're working with media and visual effects and after effects in Premiere Pro, I found that the bottleneck is actually primarily your CPU. Once the media is in After Effects, it's the CPU that has to do all the processing and the calculating and the rendering out. In Premiere Pro, most of that sits with your graphics card because Premiere Pro does use the Mercury playback engine, which is GPU accelerated. After Effects doesn't use that so much, so it's mainly on the CPU. But you know, the CPU that Intel included with the machine, which is the i7-6950X Extreme Edition CPU, was able to deal with that 4K footage pretty easily. And you'll see this throughout the rest of the tutorial, because again, keep in mind, everything I'm doing for this video is actually in full 4K. But now, let's return to After Effects and start putting together our fire-breathing effect. Let's start by grabbing the Tobias Scared layer and dropping it onto the new composition icon. So we're going to create a new composition. So it's just a clip of me standing at the pantry, cookie jar in hand, being all scared as Walter spews fire over the right side of the screen. And let's drag in the other clip, which is the Walter matte clip. Let's drop that into the composition on top of the Tobias Scared layer. And this is exactly the same shot. So I had my camera on a tripod, exact same shot, except Walter standing on the right hand side and spewing fire, all angry. So we're going to cut this clip together with the clip of me standing on the left side, being all scared. And then we're going to add the actual fire effect, the smoke, some glow, and just blend it all together nicely for the final visual effect. Let's start out nice and easy, zoom out a little bit. Let's grab the rectangle tool and let's draw a mask with the Walter matte layer selected. Let's draw a mask over the right side of this layer. So we're going to cut together these two clips so you can see me on the left side and Walter on the right side breathing fire. In the tutorial files that you can download from the description of this video, you will find two separate image sequences. One is called fire breath underscore white one V5 and one is called fire breath white 1 V5 light. Before we drag these image sequences into our composition, we need to make sure that the frame rates match. And if I look on my Walter mat or my Tobias scared layer, I can see that they're at 23.976 frames per second. Now the image sequences that I brought in are currently set to 30 frames per second, which is incorrect. So with these image sequences, simply right click, go to interpret footage, main, and then make sure that your assumed frame rate is set to 23.976. Is it okay? Let's make sure the V5 light is set to 23.976 as well. So interpret footage, main 23.976. Is it okay? And now let's bring in fire breath wide one underscore V5. So let's just drag that into our composition at the very top. And there it is. This image sequence contained the rendered out fire and the smoke that water spewing all over my kitchen. And I created these elements in Houdini. Let's jump over to Houdini for a second and this is the final setup that I had to create the fire breathing effect. Now, this is pretty involved and I will cover how to do all of this in later tutorials. This one I wanted to keep a little bit shorter so we're not running into a full hour. I just wanted to quickly show you how I've set this up and how this is all hanging together. As you can see, this is the exact same shot that we had in Adobe After Effects with Walter spewing fire and me being all scared with the cookie jar in my hands. In order to create a fire breathing effect that would interact with the elements in my scene, I essentially remodeled the geometry of my kitchen in 3D. I then used the pyro tools within Houdini to generate a simulation of fire being ejected from Walter's mouth directly over my kitchen geometry. I rendered this out into a fire and smoke and a lighting layer. And those are the two image sequences that we're compositing in Adobe After Effects. Let's return to Adobe After Effects and here's the rendered fire effect. If we solo this layer, you can see that this fire is actually interacting with the geometry in my scene. It's interacting with my kitchen table and the countertop and the smoke is swirling around all of those elements. So this is how you can generate visual effects in a 3D program and have them, well in quotation marks, interact with the geometry in your actual original shot. Let's unsolo the layer, let's collapse everything and let's blend this in a little bit nicer with the rest of our scene. First off, I'm not too happy with the color. I find it's a little bit too red and a little bit too saturated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a simple hue and saturation effect. Just bring down the master saturation just a little bit and I'm still finding the red. The red channel itself is kind of a bit oversaturated. In my view, obviously, you can tweak this any way you like. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the hue and saturation effect, change my channel control over to my reds. I'm just going to bring the reds down a little bit more just so it's a bit more, a bit more muted, just a little bit more tamed. We're obviously going to amp up the intensity in a little bit, but I just want to get the colors under control first. Next, let's apply another effect and this one you can actually download for free. It's called VC Color Vibrance. So that's from Video Copilot. It's one of their free plugins. So you can just download that and apply it to the Fire Breath layer. Let's change the color over to a really bright yellow, almost white. That looks about right. Let's hit OK. And let's bring down the vibrance. I just want a little bit of color kind of creeping in there. Let's reduce preserve luminosity to just bring up the brightness a little and maybe I'll increase the brightness itself just to add some more intensity into the fire. Obviously feel free to tweak this any way you like but I think this is actually not too bad. Next I want to add a little bit of glow to this fire and again in After Effects you always have many ways of doing the same thing. One thing you could do is if you wanted to you can simply apply a glow effect and kind of tweak this to your liking. Now the reason I'm not too happy doing this is because adding this glow also intensifies the darkness of the smoke which you may want to, it actually looks kind of cool. It's like really, really black smoke as well, but it's not quite what I'm after. So I'm actually not going to apply the glow. Let's just delete that again. Instead, I'm actually, well, first off, let's name this layer something useful. Let's actually call it Fire Breath, just so it's a bit easier to identify. Let's duplicate this layer, call this one Fire Breath Glow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a fast blur effect onto this layer. So let's just drag and apply a fast blur effect to the Fire Breath Glow. Maybe we'll solo this out so you can see what's happening. And let's jack up the blurriness to maybe almost 300. I want this just to be kind of a, a bright blob. I'm also going to enable repeat edge pixel just so you don't get these black edges on the corner of your composition. So let's enable repeat edge pixels. Looks a little bit better. Let's unsolo this layer and change the blend mode over to add. And there you go. It's adding a huge amount of intensity to this fire. Maybe a little bit too much. Maybe I'm going to lower the opacity down to maybe around 50%. I do want some more intensity, but maybe not quite that much. So again, feel free to tweak this to your liking. And since we're dealing with glow and a lot of gradients, I'm actually going to quickly return to my project settings and make sure that my project is set to 32 bits per channel. I'll just make sure that some of the gradients are kind of retained a little bit nice and a bit more smooth. And let's rewind our composition and play this back. You can see it's not quite playing real time, but keep in mind this is full 4K footage being played back. So this is pretty intense. I mean, not just from Walter's facial expression. Cool, that's not looking too bad, but one of the things I'm really missing is that the fire doesn't cast any light onto the walls, onto the counter, onto me or anything. So it, it kind of looks a bit glued on. It's not quite integrated into the scene just yet. Whenever you intend to composite fire elements into your shot in post-production, the best way to deal with the lighting is to use practical lights. For this particular shot, it would have been ideal to have a light on the table or aimed at the wall that then turns on and off and flickers in sync with water spewing the fire because real light will always look better than fake light. However, that may not always be possible and I didn't do it for this shot. So let me show you how I solved the lighting issue for this particular visual effect. For that, let's bring in our Fire Breath White 1 V5 light layer into our composition. Let's drop it at the very top. Again, this is something I rendered out from Houdini and because I had already remodeled my kitchen geometry within Houdini, I was able to render out a light only layer. So I'm only rendering out the light contributions of that volumetric fire onto the geometry within my kitchen. What's cool about this is that the lighting layer matches perfectly onto the volumetric fire breath effect that I created in Houdini. But we will have to do a little bit of work to composite it nicely into our shot. First off, just like with the fire, I do find the colors a little bit too saturated. So let's bring that down a little bit by applying a hue and saturation effect. And let's just bring down the master saturation a little bit just to tone down the colors. Also, if we zoom in a little bit, because my render out of Houdini for this light layer was a little bit lower quality, I can see a bit of grain, especially in the darker areas. So let's quickly apply a fast blur effect and let's bring the blurriness up to maybe about 15 or so. Let's enable repeat edge pixel and let's zoom back out. Next, let's actually rename this layer to fire breath light and let's just go really simplistic and simply change the blend mode from normal over to add. Let me re-enable the visibility on the fire breath and the fire breath glow layers as well. And let's just rewind and play this back. Cool, that is looking pretty good, but 
Well, we can obviously see some issues right here where because this lighting layer did not include me or Walter, I'm essentially being overlaid with this light, which looks really unnatural and weird. So we're going to have to fix up this. The other thing I'm noticing as well is that Walter himself doesn't actually receive any light from this fire because again, I didn't really render him out as a 3D model and had any light on him. So we're going to have to kind of fix him up a bit and just brighten him up a bit as well, just so that he blends in a bit nicer with this shot. But Walter second, first let's deal with me here hiding the cookie jar on the left side and with how we can get this light to kind of drop behind me. Let's solo the fire breath light layer again. First, I think I'm gonna to wanna to mask out just everything just between the bench top and the side of the wall here because I think that's just kind of it's kind of hanging off in the end as a little bit of glow here so what I'm going to do first in my fire breath light let's select the rectangle tool let's come out a little bit let's draw a mask right here down the middle between the bench and the wall and I'm going to change the mask mode over to subtract to just take that out of the glow so that just kind of cleans up that edge a little bit and maybe I'll adjust the mask a little just so it's aligned with the side of the wall right there. So there's no glow in this particular area from the fire breath light layer. And now in order to place this light behind me, we're gonna have to do some rotoscoping. So let's collapse all of the layers. Let's take the Tobias scared layer and let's duplicate it. And let's pre-compose this. So Control Shift C to pre-compose. And I'm going to call this layer Tobias Roto. Let's hit okay. Let's jump into the Tobias Roto layer. So that's just a layer of me being scared and we now essentially need to rotoscope me out. Now, this isn't the best clip for rotoscoping for one. The edges of me are a little bit blurry. So this is going to make it a little tricky to roto this out cleanly, but also the pantry itself is kind of dark. So right here we have these really dark patches that are kind of color wise quite close to my shirt and my arm. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. Also, I'm noticing my composition is about two and a half seconds. I think I can still do that with the Roto Brush tool. The Roto Brush tool is great, but it does tend to get pretty slow once you pass a couple of seconds because it has to propagate from frame to frame forward. And we're also dealing with 4K footage here. I have found that the Intel CPU actually dealt with this pretty well, but I'm still going to essentially rotoscope this out and then render it out as a separate layer and bring it back into After Effects just so that it doesn't really hinder my workflow. Now, the way I'm going to deal with the fact that this is kind of dark and the edges aren't very clearly defined, I'm essentially going to duplicate my layer. And on my top layer, I'm going to call this one Tobias Matte. And I'm going to brighten this up first and then do the rotoscoping on the brightened up layer. So the edges are a bit easier to find for the roto brushing tool. And then just use this as a track mat onto my Tobias scared layer. So it's just going to make rotoscoping a little bit easier. So with the Tobias Matte layer selected, let's search for the curves effect and let's apply it. And what I want to do, I want to push up the brightness by quite a lot to really bring out the detail in my footage. So it's a lot easier for the Roto Brush tool to find the edges. That doesn't look too bad. Before we use the Roto Brush tool, however, we need to make sure that we pre-compose this layer. So let's select Tobias Matte, Control Shift C to pre-compose it. Let's call this Tobias Matte Comp and make sure you move all attributes, including this curves effect into the new composition. Hit OK. Go to the beginning of your composition. Let's hit the Roto Brush tool and let's double click on the Tobias Matte Comp. And this will bring up our Roto Brushing window. And before we get started, let's come up into view, resolution. Make sure that this is set to full resolution. So many people fall over on this. They kind of paint on the Roto Brushing tool at third or half resolution. And then when they render it out, it propagates entirely differently. So make sure you're at full resolution because that's what we're going to render. And let's start Roto Brushing me out. As you can see, even on the new Intel CPU, also because this is 4K footage, it does take a little bit to calculate each stroke and it's still not perfect. So, but I'm just, we don't have to be too detailed anyway. So let's start stepping through this. Now, this is a rather slow and tedious process and I don't want you to have to sit there and get bored. So I'm going to speed up this video and I'll meet you on the other side. Cool, and there we are. That was probably about 15 minutes. Let's return to our Tobias Roto composition with the Tobias Matte Comp layer still selected in the Roto Brush tool settings. So let's make sure we enable motion blur. Just, it'll just refine the edges a little bit nicer. And now on our Tobias Scared layer, which sits underneath the layer we actually rotoscoped, let's change the track mat over to alpha. Cool, so now we have me rotoscoped out from the rest of the shot. And if you enable the alpha channel, you can see that's all we have. 
but because we still have the rotor brush tool applied to the top layer, I don't really want to work directly with this composition throughout the rest of my effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to render this composition out separately because you can see it, it's just, it's a little bit slow calculating all the time because the rotor brush tool has to propagate. So let's add it to our render queue. So control shift and the forward slash. Let me bring this up just a little bit. Let's come into the output module. My format QuickTime is fine. I'm just going to come into my format options and the video codec, I'm going to change over to PNG because PNG supports alpha. So I'm going to change this over to PNG, 100% quality. I don't want to lose anything along the way while I'm building my visual effects. Let's hit okay. Make sure your channels are set to RGB plus alpha. So we are actually going to put out the alpha channel. So we're just going to end up with me rotoscoped out and then just against transparent backdrop. Let's hit okay. Tobias rotor is fine. Let's just find a location to save it to. Hit save and let's render this out to disk. And again, I'm going to speed this up just so you don't have to sit through it. Cool, with this layer rendered out, let's return to our project. Let's click into some empty space and here's the clip, Tobias rotors. So let's import that into our project. And I'm actually also going to rename this Tobias scared composition, which is the one we're actually building the fire breath effect in. Let's rename this to actually fire breath VFX, just so we know what it is. Jump into this composition and first off, make sure you disable the visibility on the Tobias Roto layer. This layer contains the Roto brushing tool and so if I now jump forward in my composition, you can see that my computer starts churning away because it's now propagating this Roto brushing effect that sits inside this layer. Ah, that actually finished surprisingly quickly, but anyways, we don't need it. So let's disable the visibility on the Tobias Roto layer. If you want to, you can also hide your layer and then hide all hideable layers. So it's kind of no longer visible in your composition. It's a bit neater. And let's grab the Tobias Roto layer, which is the layer just of me and drag it into our composition and place it at the very, very top. And there you go, the light now sits behind me. However, it looks a little bit unnatural and my edges are a little bit bit ugly and rugged. And one thing we can use, we can use light wrap to make this look a little bit more natural. Light wrap refers to the effect of light bending around the edges of your subject. So along the edges, you kind of get a little bit of that light and that glow coming through. And this is actually really easy to add. We're just going to essentially soften out the edges of this roto brushed layer. For that, with the Tobias roto layer selected, let's simply apply a matte choker effect. And let me solo this layer again, just so that it's a bit easier to see and enable the alpha channel so you can kind of see the edges right now are kind of harsh and unpleasant. In the settings for the matte choker effect, let's bring up the geometric softness one. So if you watch the edges, you can kind of see they're being softened out and cut in a little bit. So let's just bring this up. So we're softening out the edges of this matte, of this roto layer. And I'm also going to increase the gray level softness one a little bit, just so it's a little bit softer. And if we now unsolder this layer, you can see how there's a little bit of light bleeding over the edges of this rotor layer. So if I disable the matte choker, harsh and ugly, with that enabled, you can see the light is kind of bleeding around a little bit and it just looks a lot more natural, just a little bit nicer. And now if I rewind and play this back, Cool. Can you see how I'm blending much nicer and you kind of get this glow effect from the fire being reflected onto my edges and looks a whole lot more natural. Finally, the last thing I want to fix is the fact that Walter himself is actually really dark. Given that he's the one spewing this dragon fire, he's, he's a bit too dark for me. So we're going to use a very similar approach to what we did with me and we're going to rotoscope him out so we can kind of brighten up just the Walter layer so he blends into the shot a little bit better. For that, let's return to the beginning of our composition. Let's take our Walter matte layer, let's duplicate it and let's pre-compose it. Let's call this layer Walter Roto, hit OK. Let's jump into this composition and we can actually get rid of the mask on this layer. We don't really need it. And we're going to use the same approach of essentially just duplicating this layer, rotoscoping on top and then using that as a track mat. So first off, let's duplicate the Walter matte layer. Let's call this Walter matte matte and let's apply a curves effect. Let me zoom in just a little bit so we can kind of see what we're trying to achieve. And you can see, especially his pants are black and what's behind him is black. And same with the shirt, it's very bright and the side of the wall is quite bright. So we need to make sure that we're getting this a little bit more contrasty. And again, for that, I'm actually going to push up the brightness, not by too much though. I want to avoid the shirt bleeding into the color of the wall. And then I'll just add a little bit more contrast to try to make the edges of the footage look a little bit more clearly defined. 
and I reckon that should probably work. So let's go to the beginning. Let's pre-compose our Walter Matt Matt. And let's call this Walter Matt Matt Comp. I think I've said Matt way too many times now. Let's move all attributes into the new composition. Hit OK. Let's pick the rotor brushing tool. Double click on the Matt Comp and let's start rotor brushing. Let me zoom in a little bit. And again, let's make sure under view resolution is set to full. And we don't actually need to rotor brush the first few frames here because Walter isn't actually spewing any fire yet, so there wouldn't be any light on him. So I'm gonna move forward a little bit to probably about here. This is probably where the fire will start and this is where we then need to start lighting water up. So I think I can start rotor brushing from here. I'm actually going to trim in this layer because we don't need to start any earlier than that. So let me trim in those two layers. The first few frames aren't really relevant. And let's just start rotor brushing water. As before, I'm going to speed up this footage because I don't think there's any value in you sitting there watching me rotoscope. So I'm going to see you on the other side. Cool, that doesn't look too bad. Now it did take a little bit longer than to rotoscope me out. This was a little bit more fiddly. Let's return to our Walter Roto composition and let's check this out. So on the Walter mat layer, let's simply change the track mat over to alpha mat. That's rotoscoped out quite nicely. Now, instead of using the mat choker to later on refine and soften out the edges of this mask, you can also come into the mat comp layer where we applied our roto brush tool. Let's anyways make sure we enable the motion blur. And you can actually also just feather out this whole thing. So let's make this 25. So this will essentially just kind of soften out the edge of Walter a little bit. So it's not so harsh when we kind of composite this back into our fire breath effect. But now, as before, let's return to the beginning of our composition and let's render this out. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Again, I'm going to change my format to QuickTime format option. Let's again change this over to PNG. 100% quality, okay. Render this out as RGB plus alpha because again, we want the alpha channel. Hit okay. And yep, just gonna save it right next to my Tobias Roto. This time I'm going to call this Walter Roto. Save and let's render this out. As before, I am going to speed this up just so you don't have to sit through this boring render process. Cool, and the render is done. Let's return to our project and let's import our Walter Roto file. So there it is. Let's return to our fire breath VFX and let's disable visibility on the water roto layer because again, we don't need to see it. And I'm also just going to hide it just so it's out of the way. Let's drag the water roto comp into our composition and I'm actually going to drop it below the fire breath layer so that the smoke and fire sits on top of this layer. So if we now scrub halfway through, nothing has changed, but we now have a Walter Roto comp, which is really just this one layer of water sitting in there. And what I can do is I can change the blend mode of this layer over to add, and it'll essentially just add light onto Walter and it'll just make him look a little bit more realistic in that shot. However, not quite done yet. For one, the color seems a little bit off and he's also just popping in like right there. He's just going from no lighting to full lighting, which looks really weird. So let's bring up the opacity for the water roto layer. Let's enable the stopwatch icon on the opacity and bring this down to zero. Let's scrub forward a little bit to maybe about here is where I want to have him fully lit by this fire. So let's bring the opacity up to maybe around the 60% or so. So that actually looks a whole lot more realistic. But I also want to tint him a little bit yellow and a little bit orange just so it kind of blends in a bit better. For that, let's go to our effects and presets and apply a curves effect. Let's come down into the red channel and let's just push a little bit more red into it. So it just looks a little bit more reddish tinted by this fire. And I'm going to come into the green channel and bring this up a little bit as well. So it kind of just gets a little bit more of an orangey color tinge, which feels a bit more realistic to the fire. And that actually looks pretty good. Let's collapse everything. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Let's rewind our composition and play back our final fire breathing effect. Please leave me some comments down below whether you enjoyed starting out by compositing together the final effect first before we start diving into all of the details of Houdini or whether you actually prefer going through the entire process start to finish. Before I let you all go, I do want to say thank you to Intel for doing this sponsorship deal with me and of course for this massively spec'd out PC they sent me. Overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with the performance of the hardware and I feel I've really tried to push the limits with rendering for weeks on end in Houdini and throwing all sorts of 4K footage at it. 
the i7-6950X processor with a crazy 10 cores. I personally felt especially useful when going crazy with multitasking and doing rendering and exporting and video editing all at the same time. The 750 series drives did extremely well in my local tests. Unless you start to pull in huge amount of data into your projects all at the same time though, I felt the bottleneck was much more on the CPU than necessarily the hard drives, but I'm pretty sure I will find a good use for the hard drives soon enough. If you want to filmmaking or visual effects and you do want to find out more about the top of the line Intel hardware, or maybe you just want to see my latest face mail tutorial, make sure to go and check out vfxcreator.intel.com. And that's all there is to it. Now I will go into the details of how to create your own custom file within Houdini in some later tutorials. Just leave me some feedback down below whether you're actually keen on it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please show your support by liking, favoriting and sharing it with the world. If you want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials just like this one, don't forget to subscribe and as always if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions just leave them down in the section below. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone at Intel for the opportunity to work with them and for all of the support and to everyone else, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.